Right. My AI just... Good morrow, young fellows. My name is Sonny Vansdedia, a second-year biology major. And our lab tech on camera is Brian Ruiz, a second-year biochem major. In addition to the lovely face and voice, we have a cameraman, Sami Azad, a second-year philosophy major. Now let us look into the world of safety and chemistry together. Today we will discuss the true nature of a reagent pump, a nature not too familiar to the eager general chemistry student. Although you are bursting with potential, you would like to tame your vigor for explosions in lab are not recommended. Before carrying out any lab procedures, be aware that the potential safety hazards and equip yourself with the correct safety gear. For the purposes of this video, we will wear all safety equipment provided in the lab, including goggles, lab coat, and gloves. We recommend you utilize all available safety apparatus. Now, let us examine the reagent pump. The pump itself has a few components, a plunger to lift and release for reagent flow, a plastic tip for precise allocation of reagent, and a volume adjustment knob. Do not touch the volume adjustment knob. This knob has been set prior to the lab. The pump dispenses reagent out of a labeled reservoir, usually a plastic bottle. The final thing to do before pumping is check the label of the pump's reservoir to make sure you are dispensing the correctly concentrated reagent. Now that we have not touched the volume adjustment knob, we may pump. First off, put your reagent reception unit in a position primed for reagent reception. We will position the reception unit which in this case is a graduated cylinder underneath the tip of the reagent pump, and move the graduated cylinder up and back to nest the spout in the graduated cylinder. To pump, one will carefully lift the plunger to its maximum height. Once the plunger is at max height, one slowly presses the plunger down completely. Now you have correctly pumped reagent into your graduated cylinder. Now, it is time to cover some mistakes performed by eager general chemistry students, which although they are in good faith, are wasteful and destructive practices. The first mistake to be covered is overpumping reagent. This usually results from pressing the pump too many times. When I get aggressive, tell you to go slower, go faster, like control. Another mistake is caused by one student affecting the volume adjustment knob and having subsequent students pump from the maladjusted knob. The number of pumps will be stated on the reagent pump reservoir, so carefully inspect the reservoir's labels. On this reagent pump, we can see one pump directly specified to dispense 5 milliliters. So perform the pump procedure exactly this many times for correct reagent allocation. Now, let me emphasize, please do not touch the volume adjustment knob. Another mistake regularly performed by eager general chemistry students is pouring any excess reagent back into the reservoir or down the drain. Pouring excess reagent back into the reservoir can easily cause contamination and we want to avoid it. So what do we do if we pump excess? If we have extra reagent, we can just use what we need first. After using what we need by measuring out the reagent with graduated cylinders, we can neutralize an acid or a base with sodium bicarbonate, found next to sinks and on every table. If it's not an acid or base, please consult your instructor or LAs for methods of handling excess reagent. Now, we have covered what we need to keep everybody safe, clean, and sustainable. Thanks for listening. We really enjoyed the company of your ears. Good luck pumping. Thank God you came. How many more days could I wait? Like controller, controller.